really good handle on your hack uh, 13, which is due tonight. Uh, but uh, this is basically what you're doing in hack 13. Uh, so, uh, and also we're not going to take the whole time. Uh, once we're done with this, we'll go ahead and call it. And I would invite you to come on over to the Shore Center, uh, where Initialize, which is our um, uh, uh, our student-led organization, one of our student-led organizations for community service, outreach, and things like that. They're having a showcase over in Shore, and they said that they had food there, so that's why I'm going, but I also want to see what they've done. Uh, so uh, there is some, hopefully there's some good food over there, a pizza or something, hopefully, instead of just, you know, the, the charcuterie or whatever. Uh, so uh, we won't take the whole time uh, in order that we can get, go over there at, at 6 o'clock, and I'd invite you to come over and check it out, especially if you want to get involved with the department, especially if you want to do uh, some com like uh, community service and outreach uh, within the context of computer science in the department. Uh, so uh, in this uh, final, well, in this exercise, uh, we'll implement uh, an object uh, a structure to uh, represent a film. Uh, we'll want the title of that film. We'll want the director of that film as their first name and their last name. So we probably want to separate those two. We don't want just last name, comma, first name, all as one string, because ultimately we're going to be sorting it. And if those two things are two different, or if, there's, if it's just one name, then it's going to be difficult to sort, uh, sort all the Smiths, uh, uh, Adrian Smith, and then down to uh, Jackson Smith or whatever, right? So uh, the, the release year that the film was released and the IMDB rating of the film, uh, which is a numerical score 0 to 10. So in addition to that, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a, a main film driver here that is going to open up a CSV file. So I've got several films here, uh, 32 of them actually, uh, it, with the title, uh, the director first name, the director last name, the release year, and the actual IMDB rating that I, I pulled off of IMDB at some point for all this data. Uh, and then we're going to produce several reports on it. Uh, some of the reports that we're going to produce are we're going to sort it by title, director, then in the year. For, so for the same director, we'll want to list them uh, according to the year in some order. Uh, their rating, uh, the number of uh, then uh, these uh, other additional statistical reports here, uh, which are enumerated down here. Uh, so for the C version, write, uh, uh, write code to produce a report that lists all the directors, their last name, first name, in order, as well as the number of films. So if we've got three Ridley Scott films, we'll want to collapse those three records down and just report Ridley Scott, and he directed three films according to the database that we have right now. Uh, and then finally, uh, write code to produce a report that for each year. Uh, for each year, so we're going to sort them by year and group all the uh, uh, films that were released in 1980 or whatever, and we're going to report the average rating of the movies in that year. Uh, so it's a little bit more than what you're doing right now uh, on Hack 13, but it's the same basic idea. Uh, in fact, uh, you'll, uh, you'll be doing exactly this kind of stuff for Hack 14, and you're ultimately your last homework where you're going to be designing uh, structures to support a financial transaction, uh, and then you're going to be doing various fraud detection uh, algorithms and statistical analysis on those things. Uh, so we're given a header file here, and we first have to define the film. Uh, we're also given a bunch of other free, uh, some of them are done for you, uh, but uh, otherwise some of them are not done for us. Uh, so for example, uh, let's see, which, which, uh, I don't know which ones are done for us and which ones are, uh, okay. So apparently I did not enumerate all the, uh, uh, all of these are done for us. Uh, what we need to do is we need to add anything else that will help us with this. So in other words, we're going to want to write probably a factory method uh, that we can create something, maybe an initialization method. Uh, maybe we want to uh, create a bunch of comparators uh, for all this stuff. It's left, to, we're left to our own devices here, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is to define our structure. Uh, and what we need is a title. So that's going to be a oops, uh, char star title. Right? Let me increase the size here. Better? Right. Uh, what else was there? Uh, the director first name. So char star director first name. And char star director last name. Uh, I'm keeping those separate because I'm going to want to sort by last name, then first name. And if they're separate, then it's going to be a whole, a, a whole lot easier to do that. Okay. Uh, what else do we want? The release year of the film. Uh, what type is that going to be? An integer, okay. 
uh, year, I'll just call it year for short. Uh, and then finally an IMDB movie rating, a numerical score 0.0, .0 through 10.0. So what, ki uh, what kind of, uh, should that be an integer? No, double Y because yeah, you can rate a movie ten and a, or nine and a half points, right? So IMDB rating or just rating. I'll keep it simple. Right. Uh, so now there are a bunch of utility functions here. We, we might want to take a look and see what has been provided to us so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, there's a deep copy string function, great. Uh, there's a split function. That split function is a utility function that splits a string into an array of strings along the provided single character delimi delimiter. In other words, if you've got CSV data, it'll split it for you, right? And this is why uh, we, uh, the, uh, doing it in a final, uh, you know, uh, if, if we were having you do this in like an assignment or something, then we'd make you do something like this. But in a final, two years ago when I was doing this, uh, I, I, I gave them a lot of star starter code so they didn't have to start from scratch. Uh, so basically we're going to pass in a string, a line in the file, uh, the delimiter is going to be a comma, and then this guy is going to tell us how many tokens it actually read. Right? Uh, the, let's see, where is that? Uh, the parameter is used to inform the calling. Uh, the last parameter is used to inform the calling function of how many tokens it found, and thus the size of the returned string array, just like you've done before in several of your exercises. Uh, we've got a free string array. In other words, once we've split it and once we use those tokens, that's going to free it up for us, so we don't need to uh, to do that. Uh, we've got a comparator here done for us for integers, and uh, that was done just to remind people this is what a comparator is, remember? And then we've got a get unique integers. I wonder what the, how we could utilize that. It's a utility function given an array of integers of size n, returns a new array containing only unique integers from that input array. How will that help us? What's the only integer here? The year, right? So maybe we can leverage that somehow. I don't know. Uh, and then to do, add any functions that you feel might help you, okay? And then over here in the film driver, uh, we have to process the file. So in other words, we're going to open up this CSV file here. Uh, we're, the, the first line tells us how many records there are, right? 33 all the way up to four here. Uh, and, uh, and so we're going to ha have to open up the, uh, the file and process it one, uh, line by line and build an array of film object, or film structures, okay? So let's go ahead and start by doing that over here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to open up the file. So file f equals fopen. And we're going to open up, the f uh, I'll just go ahead and hard code it for now. But actually, no, sorry. It's uh, read in as a command line argument here. So argv sub 1. And we'll re open it up for reading. Okay. Now, what I'm going to want to do is read this line by line. But I'm going to want to treat this first line differently, because I want to know how many records I should be reading here, right? So let's go ahead and just read that first line. To do so, I'm going to want a buffer of, let's just say, a, a thousand characters here. Right? It's a character array. Right? And then I'm going to go ahead and read in that first line using what, uh, f get, what is it to read in a, an entire line? S. The gets, right? f, uh, or sorry, I'm going to read it into the buffer at most 1,000 minus 1 bytes because it puts in the null terminating character for me and I'm going to be reading from the file f. Right? This is reading the first line. Right? Now that's going to be just a single integer. So what I want to do is I want to convert that string into an integer. How do I do that? a2i of buffer. Right? And that's going to be, in this case, it's going to be 32, but uh, we could give it a different input, and there are 50 films now, or two films, or something. Right? So I'm going to use that n. right? Uh, uh, when, when, when you're doing the file I.O., there might be a bunch of trailing blank spaces and then crap down at the bottom, right? So let's not have to worry about that. Why ignore this? Why give this to you if you're going to ignore it? Let's use it, right? So in other words, instead of doing a traditional while loop here, I'm going to do a basic for loop. Right? Before I do that, I need to set up your array to hold films. Oops, films, there we go. So it's going to be a film array. Right, films, right? and I'll go ahead and call film star <laughs> malloc on size of film times, and then how many of them do I want? I want n of them. Right? Now, a lot of people are uh, confusing an array of regular old structures and an array of pointers. This is an array of regular old structures. 
if I index the first one, films sub zero, that's just a regular old structure. So would I use the dot operator on this stuff or would I use the arrow operator if it's a regular old structure? Dot, right? Uh, but that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm going to worry about that in a bit here. Uh, but I've got my uh, array here. And so now I, what I can do is I can go in, instead of a, a while loop, I can go into a for loop because I know exactly how many records I should be reading, right? Now, if you lie, if, if we lie to you, right? Uh, no, no, there are actually 50 records when there are not 50 records. That is on us, right? That's bad malformed input. You can't expect to reasonably recover from that. So int i equals 0. i is less than n, i plus plus. Now we want to process the next line and create a new film. OK. Uh, OK. Well, that kind of tells me what do I, uh, I, I don't want to have to do this, you know, uh, have a big chunk of code here. Maybe I want to define a function to do this for me. Right? So let's do, do we want to do a create film or do we want to do an init film? Do we already have a pre-existing film? allocated memory wise that is yes films of i right oh sorry films there we go i'm java mode right now for some reason uh there's films of i okay so it's all it already exists which one of these things do i want create film or init film let's go with init film init film will take a pre-existing film by reference and then it'll take everything that it needs to, cr uh, to uh, construct that film, right? All this stuff right here. And I will need, uh, uh, I don't in general copy pasta, but it's okay in this case because copy, copy pasting, it's not correct, right? Uh, I still have to change it a little bit. Uh, get rid of semicolons and add commas everywhere. Uh, name, there we go. And year and rating. Uh, super long line, I don't like it. So what can we do with super long lines? Well, we can break them up if you really want to. There we go. And I don't know, is there a quick, quick key to do this? Nope. If I were in a different IDE, there would be a quick key to do this. Okay, there we go. So that's the prototype. To do add documentation. Otherwise, that's two points off or something. Right? So I'm not going to do that because it's just plain old English. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and go over here and actually implement it now. Right? Your functions go here. I want this function. So what does it look like? Uh, I need to create memory to hold the title, the director's first name, the director's last name. But remember, I said we need to really pay attention to the starter code that we've been given. Why? I've got something to do that for me. Right? Deep copy, string deep copy. So F's uh, director's first name is going to be equal to a deep copy. Oops, what am I doing? Uh, there we go. Uh, F's uh, director first name, or title, sorry. Let's start with title because that's the first one, is equal to deep copy of title. Uh, that saves me from having to do malloc, then string copy, malloc, then string copy, malloc, string copy, etc. And hopefully you're thinking about doing that in your own assignments, but you know, I, I see myself doing the same two lines over and over again. That's screaming out to you. Maybe I, you should add your own function. Right? Now, how do I get to F's title? Is it F dot or is it F arrow? What do I have in this case? I have a film pointer. So which one is it? Dot or arrow? Arrow. There we go. All right. There's the title. Uh, let's go one more in. Title, director's first name, director's last name. Copy pasta, copy pasta, copy pasta, copy pasta. F's year is going to be equal to year. Now here it's just a regular old integer, so you don't have to do any fancy copying. It's just an assignment operator. Rating is equal to rating, right? There. And then you return because it's a void function. If you wanted to redesign this a little bit and return an integer for error handling, uh, say that, uh, no, you, you can't have a missing title. You can't have a null title. So we'll go ahead and not do anything and then just return an error code of one instead, right? Uh, but uh, that, that's a, just a different design, okay? 
So that looks good. Let's go ahead and go over here to film uh, and let's actually call it now. Init film films and then what do I pass in here? What I want to do is I want to process each line. So I need to pro I need to get this I, I need to get this line which I haven't done yet. And then what I need to do is I need to break it up. I need this title, I need the first name, the last name, the the year and then the the rating there. So process the next line. The first thing I should do is probably get the next line. If it gets buffer 1000 F. Now I've got the next line. Now normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to start tokenizing this thing, right? You'd have to str token, get the first token, and then copy that. Uh, get the second token, then copy that. Third token, etc. But we've already done that for you in where was it? Split, this split function right here. Okay. So use it. Right. We will split, char, I'll call it tokens, is equal to split, and we'll split the buffer along, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a CSV, so it's comma, uh, it's comma delimited, uh, the uh, delimiter there. And finally, uh, we need to know how many tokens there are, num tokens. And so I need, of course, Sorry, let's get rid of that. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I need to. Uh, I need this uh, um, uh, variable here. I'll go ahead and put it up at the top. There we go. Uh, and it's an integer. Okay. Now there are a couple. Pro uh, there, uh, there's at least one. Uh, yeah. There, there's at least one problem here. Am I calling this correctly? What is num tokens? Num tokens is a regular old integer. What does split take? Does it take a regular old integer? Nope, it takes a pointer to an integer. So how do I take a regular old variable and make it into a pointer variable? Ampersand or star? Ampersand, okay. <laughs> and then you can check if, you know, if num tokens is not equal to five, wow, something really happened because we were expecting five tokens. The title, first name, last name, uh, IMDB rating, and the year. Right? And if there are not five tokens there, then uh, this is malformed file, and we can uh, we can ex uh, we can just quit, right? So uh, to do, right? I'll leave that for, uh, for as an exercise for you. Otherwise, we've got these five tokens: tokens of zero, tokens of one, tokens of two. Uh, the first one represents the title, so I just simply need to tokens sub zero, tokens. There's the first name, tokens of the last name. But now can I do this? Tokens of three and tokens of four, right? These are strings. Does my init function that I just wrote take strings for the last two? One is an integer, one is a double, okay? So how do I convert a string to an integer? A to I, just like we did before. What about a string to a floating point number? A to F. Oops, A to F, there we go. All right, there, and now we've in, uh, initialized the films. Except, am I calling this correct? Film sub i is a regular old structure because it's an array of regular old structures. Is that what init film requires? Nope, it requires a pointer. So once again, how do I take a regular old variable and change it into a pointer? Ampersand. I, re I reference it. I use the referencing operator. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, I think we. Uh, I think. I, I, I think that that's pretty good for now, right? Um, how could I verify this? Probably want to print them out, especially if I want to produce these reports, right? So let me think about another thing that I want to add here. Maybe print the entire array of films. Right? So void print films. Film star f, and uh, wh what else do we need to pass into this function? If I pa give you an array of films, I also need to tell you how many elements are in the uh, the array. So int n, right? and then just a regular old for loop here. Int i equals zero. I is less than n. I plus plus. Print the i. Print fil uh, films of i. And let me go ahead and rename that films. There we go. Films of i. 
well, if I'm going to print film sub i, maybe I also want to have a. Oh, well, sorry. This is uh, this this is this is a, this should only be the uh, uh, prototype here. This is the header file, and here's the source file. Let me go ahead and cut and paste that over here instead. Uh, well, how how can I print just one film? I probably want to develop a two-string method, right? Just like you did in your uh, your hacks. So let me go ahead and add that as well. Uh, char star film two string right? and film f. Right? There we go. And of course, to do add documentation all this on all this stuff. But now, before we go actually implement this, am I going to be making changes to the film? So let's put go ahead and advertise that fact and make it a const. Right? Good design. Right? There we go. So. Here's the trick that I've showed now a couple of times. <coughs> I don't want to have to do the, all the arithmetic of <coughs> the string length of the title, the string length of the name, the blah, 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 whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a buffer of something that is more than enough. And then I'm going to print, I'm going to print format the, uh, the, the title, the, the director's name, uh, IMDB rating in the year, and I'm going to do all that into a string, this buffer string right here. Do you remember what the function we use to print a formatted string? Printf prints to the standard output. Fprintf prints to a file. So Sprintf prints to a string. Right? And we'll go ahead and do it as the title uh, directed by percent %s their last name, percent %s their first name, and then in parentheses here, the year that it was released. Uh, and then finally, maybe uh, the uh, IMDB score here just out to two decimal places. Right? And we'll go ahead and uh, pad that out so that uh, it, it could be up to 10. I don't know that there's a perfect film out there, but it could be. Uh, so it could be five here. Right? And we'll go ahead and do uh, the F uh, title, F director, first name, Oh, sorry, last name, because we want last name, then first name. Uh, uh, F director, first name, uh, and then F year, and F rating. There we go. And once I've printed in there, now, I, now it's already been formatted, and I don't have to do any math whatsoever. I can go ahead and use strlen of buffer. That tells me exactly how many bytes I need, plus one for the null terminating character. Now I can call malloc, and I can cut and, uh, uh, copy this buffer into that and return that. Except, wait, we already have a function to do that for us, right? Don't reinvent the wheel. Return deep copy of buffer. There, it does it for us. <coughs> now, do we need to worry about cleaning up our memory on the buffer? No, it's statically declared. It is created in the, uh, the that thousand bytes is in the uh, stack frame. So we are abusing the stack, but just a little bit. All right. So it's just a little bit of abuse of the stack, uh, which is okay. All right. all right. So over here, we can go ahead and get a string representation of it. All right. Film to string of film sub i. Oops. There we go. And then we can print it out, printf, percent s, end the line, so that we don't print them all on the same line, s. All right. Now, there are two errors here. One of them is an error of omission, and one of them is an error of calling. All right. This requires a film pointer. Is this a film pointer? No. Oh, so once again, we need to put ampersand in front of it. Uh, then the error of omission is what? What happens to this memory after I'm done printing it? It just stays there. You lose your reference to it on the next iteration of this for loop. So what should I do with it? Free it. Right, there we go. OK. Uh, now let me go ahead and go back to my film driver over here and print a before sorting. Let's go ahead and do a report now. Right, this is where it all becomes easy because we've uh, done a bunch of functions to do it for us print films of films, and how many of them are there? N, right? and that's it. Right. Uh, let me go ahead and compile this and see what happens. CCC, 
film.c and film driver. All right. Oops. Uh, okay. Uh, a dot out, what is it? Film.txt. There we go. Oh, okay. Looks to be perfect so far. Um, let's go ahead and, and make sure. Let's see. The first one is Blade Runner. Uh, the last one is Thor Ragnarok. That looks right to me. And you could do, do a quick diff on this if you really wanted to. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. The, w the Way of the Gun. Uh, let's see, where is it? The Way of the Gun. Christopher McGuire, 2006.7. Should be way higher than that. Uh, yeah. So we're all good. Most of these are good. Uh, most of these are excellent. Yeah, it looks like I only, okay. I put it some in there intentionally trying to find some, because I was only choosing like seven or eights. And so I wanted to make sure that we had some low, uh, low ones uh, for the reports. So I put in some bad ones in there on purpose. All right, so let's go ahead and start repro producing those reports. Uh, let's go ahead and do it by title. All right. So what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to sort it and then print it. How do we sort? Q sort. And we sort films. There are n of them. And each one takes size of film bytes. Now we need a comparator to give it by a CMP by title. Right. But have I written this one yet? So back to the drawing board. Let's go ahead and write this uh, comparator. Now, what is the signature of a comparator? It returns an integer and it takes two films. No, always takes two const void star a, const void star b. Right. And then in the actual function, that's where you uh, force them to become films. Right. So const film star uh, x is equal to const film star a. And the same thing for b. Now I've got two films. Right. Remember, generic programming. Okay, I want to compare them by the title. Right? Don't worry. Uh, don't worry about the technicalities of, uh, like, if you're a librarian, then oh, uh, you don't count the a, right? Uh, you don't count the the in a title. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, we're just going to worry about basic string comparisons. So all I need to do is return strcmp x's title, title, and y's title. And it takes care of it for me. Let's go ahead and t do this again. Yep, there. Uh, oh, uh, director year. By title, oh, there. By, so there's the original. There's by title. Uh, a history of violence. Again, we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to worry about the uh, the the, uh, the articles in front of the titles. Uh, then Battlefield Earth, Blade Runner, uh, Blade Runner 2049, uh, all the way down to Young Frankenstein. Does it look sorted to you by title? Yep. Great. The next report that we have to produce is by director year. So copy, paste, but I need a different comparator. Now I forget what exactly this was. So, oops. Undo, undo, there we go. By Directory, director, or year. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have to read, read uh, the uh, handout again to remind myself what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, represented by first, uh, let's see. Uh, director, last name, then first name. Then if you've got the same director, like Ridley Scott, Ridley Scott, Ridley Scott, uh, then the oldest to the newest. So 1980 versus... 2000, right? All right, so let's go ahead and implement that. So here I've got actually three things to compare. I look at the last name, and if it's the same, then I look at the first name. And if that's the same, then I look at the year. So I just need to set up uh, that if, else, if, else, if like kind of condition. Int result is equal to first compare the last name. Oh, sorry, I need to force them to become films first. Right? There, now I can talk about X and Y. STRCMP of X's director, last name, Y's 
director last name. Now, if result is equal to zero, that tells you that they have the same last name. So you have to continue to compare things. Otherwise, they don't have the same last name. Scott versus, uh, I don't know, Jarmouche. Jarmouche comes first. So we'll go ahead and just return that result. Otherwise, if we've got a tie, basically, uh, same last name, Scott, Scott, right? Now we need to look at the first name. Oops. First name and first name. This name, no, first name. There we go. And now, if you've if if if, if you figure it out, if now you've you've got something different, uh, you can go ahead and return it. Otherwise, we'll do the same thing. If result is zero, that means that they have the same last name and the same first name. So we'll need to compare the year. Otherwise, we can go ahead and return result. And there is a little bit better way of doing this stuff, but don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Hey, wait, I remember by reading what we did before, maybe there's a, uh, something given to us that does, oh, hey, there you go, integer, right? Except that, what ordering is this? So if X is 1980, and this is 2000, they are, uh, then this will be true and it returns something negative. Is that in, or is that in order? Oldest first, remember. Yeah, sounds like it to me. So I will return, return cmp int of, uh, I don't want to do, uh, yeah, okay. How would we do this? Uh, X's year, Y's year, except that what are these things? This is a regular old integer, and it requires a pointer to an integer, so... Uh, it, it automatically casts them to void. There's uh, you can't you can't uh, you actually you can't force something to become void. It'll uh, the compiler will complain about it. Uh, like, uh, like if I do, I, th I think. Let's see. Are you going to complain about that? Yeah. Uh, you, you it won't allow you to to force it to become void. Right. All right. But if we just pass it by reference, then yep, it's fine. Uh, it'll uh, it's it's called upcasting downcasting implicit uh, and it does it implicitly. Right. Uh, that was director year. Okay, good. And then we print it again. Let's go ahead and run it again. See. Ooh. All right. By director, so Mel Brooks is first, and then Mel Brooks, his oldest film is Producers, then Young Frankenstein, then Spaceballs. Looks good to me. And then what? Who's last? John Waters. Yep. Yeah, yeah, looks nice. Yeah. I don't think so, no. no. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, you don't often ha have raw arrays of integers or numbers, though, either. I don't know. That's, uh, there might be, but, but the, the only, the only uh, standard library comparator is the string comparison, but that's not really technically a comparator because it takes explicitly char stars. Uh, and uh, and you can't directly use it as a comparator either. All right, All right last one is going to be by ratings. By rating. Right. Let's remind ourselves what that means. Highest rated first. So we're doing it in descending order. Okay, not ascending order like the, we did with the years here. Uh, the uh, lowest to highest. It would be highest to lowest. So we need to be careful when we do that. And it's going to be comp by rating. Oops. Int. Int. There we go. Same stuff here. And of course, you're going to go back and do all the documentation. All right. <coughs> and implement it here. Uh, one thing that you can cut and paste is, uh, is this casting, right? Uh, it forces them to become films. And now you just do a basic uh, if statement, right? If X's rating is greater than Y's rating, then they are in order because you want to list the uh, highest first. So you return something negative. I think he is right, right? Highest, yeah, else if. 
uh, X's rating is less than Y's rating, then I return positive. Otherwise, the only other option is to return zero. Right. Question? No, I thought uh, rating doesn't do the same. So yeah, it's a double, so uh, you, uh, you definitely have to be careful. Uh, with doubles, n no tricks, don't do the difference trick ever, right? uh, no, regardless of what you've got. Still compiles well. There we go. By rating, the highest rated one, Fight Club 8.8. .8. These are real IMDb ratings, by the way, at least from uh, 2017. Uh, and then the lowest one is Battle Battlefield Earth. I knew that that would be low, so I looked that up and, and I got that. Right. I don't know what's, uh, oh. Wow, so some of these are criminally underrated and sky high too. There we go. Otherwise, these are all excellent, excellent films and I highly uh, recommend all of them. All right. <laughs> any any disagreement so far? <laughs> no. The the these two are are terrible, but the rest of them are great. All right. All right. So I think that this uh, at this point we're done with the final from t uh, two years ago, uh, and uh, w th this was all bonus uh, to to do additional reports, but we'll go ahead and do them. We'll write code to, uh, to, to produce a report that lists all the directors in last name, first name order. We've already done that, right? Uh, but uh, it, it, we've already done something to sort it that way. Uh, and uh, as, as, uh, as well as the number of films that they have directed. So to do that, let me go ahead and resort them because they're, they're out of order according to this so far. Uh, let me go ahead and resort them according to the director. <clears throat> the year is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. What I want to do is I've got, for example, in my report over here with the, the directors, I've got three Mel Brooks films. I don't want pr to print these three lines. I want to print M Brooks, comma, Mel, and he directed three films in this collection. Right. How does sorting help me here? If I sort them all by director, all the directors will be grouped. Right? And all I need to do is go through this once. So I'll start at the beginning, and while the director is equal to the next, uh, the director of the current uh, film is equal to the director of the next film, then I add one, right? So that's equal, add one. Uh, and then of course I start with one, right? Uh, uh, add one, that's two films. Uh, add one, that's three films. Oh, it's not, okay, start my counter over. Now I'm back at one. Uh, well, that's not equal, so. Um, start my counter over, start at the next one. One, it's equal, so two, David Cronenberg, uh, David Cronenberg, so three, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So by sorting it, it allows me to, uh, to only have to go through it once and look ahead to see if the director, uh, the, the next director is uh, the, the same director as the current film. So four, int i equals zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. We might have to come back and rethink that a little bit. So if, uh, let's see, uh, do I want to do a for loop or a while loop? Hmm. Let's do a while loop inside. While the director uh, of film, film sub i is equal to the director of film sub i plus one, then count plus plus. Where do I start my counter? One, okay. Count plus plus. Now, of course, this is pseudocode. I'm, uh, this is not real C code yet. Uh, how do I do? Uh, how, how do I do? How do I do this? How do I see if that director is equal to that director? If two directors are equal if they have the same first name, same last name. I kind of have something to do that, but not exactly. If I give these off to this comparator here it would say, well, they're not equal because they were produced in different years. So maybe I want yet one more uh, comparator here that ignores the year. And to do that, I just have to get rid of that code right? and get rid of year right? and return this. Right? And it'll return uh, zero if it has the same, same last name and then the same first name, okay? 
So all I need to do is use this comparator right here to determine is the ith one equal to the i plus oneth one. So while compare directors of film sub i and films <coughs> sub i plus one, then I will, or is equal to zero because it'll tell me that it's equal, to, they're equal, so it'll re return zero. Increase my counter here, okay? Now, uh, now that I know that, the, now since I know that they're sorted, I can go ahead and say, well, once I'm done counting up all the numbers, I can go ahead and print it out, right? I can say printf percent, uh, percent s, this is the director, percent s, percent s, di uh, directed percent d films. There we go. And uh, we're still on, uh, we're still on the uh, film sub i, so films sub i dot now, because we, uh, this, uh, we're in the main function here, so this is just a regular old array. Uh, it's uh, and so we use the dot operator here instead. Director last name. Film sub i director first name. First name, and then finally the count that we just computed. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, yeah, go ahead. We need to move on to the next one. If, if, if they're equal, we need to move on to the next one. Equal, move on to the next one, okay? Uh, th this may or may not be off up here, but let's go ahead and see what it does. Oops, why are you complaining? Sorry. What do I need to do? Ampersand and ampersand. There we go. Otherwise, that would have been a seg fault. I still think we're going to get a seg fault, though. Oops. Nope, not a, uh, yeah, we are getting a seg fault down here, but I'll explain why in a second. Let's just make sure, are we correct up to this point? Mel Brooks, three films. I counted three films. Uh, uh, Roger Christian, one film. David Cronenberg, I saw three films, right? Uh, let's go back up to the directors here. Uh, Cronenberg, 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 excellent. Fincher, only one film. Hillcoat, Jarmusch, I've got four films, so does that match? Yep, good, dot, dot, dot. And then finally, uh, what's the last uh, last one? We've got uh, Waititi, uh, right? Uh, and he directed one film according to this. And then it's seg faults in the very last one, John Waters. Uh, uh, oh, it's just a coincidence that I, was, I, I read his last memoir and posted. Uh, uh, again, th th all those videos were, uh, all, th all those songs were uh, recommended by John Waters. Uh, the first one was Good Rockabilly. The others were kind of classic. Right? All right, so why did it why did it donk out on this one? Yeah, when you get out down to the last one, and you look ahead, you've fallen off the edge. So what should we do to take care of that? Okay, we'll only go up to the uh, second to last one. That means that we're going to look at Thor Ragnarok, and we're going to see that YTD is not there. So uh, let's. This is safer. Uh, oops, did I save that? No, I didn't. There we go. This should be safer. There, it's safer, but is it correct? Waititi, where's John Waters there? John Waters has one. It should be there, right? So we skip the last one. We can either handle it separately, or we could handle our while loop differently here, right? We could break out. Uh, and uh, or, or we could just handle it the, the, the last one down here, right? If, uh, let's see, if the last one is equal to the, f the second to last one, then we know that they're different and we have to report them different. Otherwise, if they're equal, then uh, we know that uh, we would have taken care of it in this while loop. So if CMP director, of the last one, which is going to be n minus one, uh, uh, compare the, the second to last one and the last one, and if they are equal, if they're not equal, then we need to include them on our report. Right? There we go. We need to include the second to last, uh, the last one in our report, n minus one, n minus one, and then of course, they only did one film. I think that this will work. Quick and dirty. 
but gets the job done. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. The last one, again, this is all bonus uh, at this point. Uh, write code to produce a report that for each year computes the average rating of all films released in that year. So same exact trick. Uh, sort them by year and then now go through and while the, the, year, uh, the current year is equal to the next year, you can, make, uh, you can use the, uh, reuse the uh, integer comparator uh, and get the job done there. Except for instead of just a count, you'd keep a count and what else? And the what? The, well, uh, the, uh, you'll want the average at the end. You'll want the count and then the sum of all the ratings. And then you, at the end, when, in your report, you'll take the sum divided by the count that gives you the average. Uh, but otherwise, it's exactly the same thing, the uh, same idea here. Right. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Right. Any questions? Otherwise, uh, looking ahead here, uh, Monday when we get back from break, I will uh, give a crash introduction, just a basic background introduction to event-based programming and how to create GUIs. Uh, it's it, the three, same three step, regardless of the framework, regardless of the language, it's the same three step process. You create widgets, you uh, put them into a layout, right? You've got your window, you've got a grid layout and you wanna put stuff into it. Uh, and then you register uh, interactive elements with callbacks. Remember callbacks are function pointers. So that when you click this button, this function over here is executed. Uh, the, the framework that we're going to be using is GTK, which stands for uh, the GNU Toolkit, uh, or the, the GIMP Toolkit, excuse me. Uh, GIMP stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program, and then GNU is GNU is not Linux. So it's got three or four acronyms in there, including the last acronym, which is a, an infinite recursion acronym. GNU, GNU is not Linux. That's what it stands for. Well, then what does the first GNU stand for? It stands for GNU is not Linux. GNU is not Linux. GNU is not Linux. Huh? So great joke there. Uh, any, uh, then after that, we'll talk about databases, which is kind of a bookend of this course, because in 156, that's where we get into real SQL, designing databases, and connecting to them. Um, but otherwise, in, during, uh, uh, during Dead Week, uh, that Wednesday will be another uh, review session, kind of like this. But I'll bring last year's final instead. Um, I think it's uh, like a, uh, it's file I/O and searching and sorting kind of stuff, but uh, uh, with Pokemon instead or something. Um, the, actually, it's I, 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 that's a good exercise. Basically, you've got I don't know anything about Pokemon, but uh, I, I know I, I read enough that I, I could make a programming assignment based on it. Uh, that you've got a hundred different Pokemon, and then in a in a, uh, in a file. You have to find your Pokemon, and then it tells you the type of Pokemon, so like fire, earth, wind, whatever. Uh, and uh, then based on that type versus another Pokemon type, if it's a fire versus water, who would win? Uh, water, I think that there's a multiplier, and then you have to report that. So two different files, you have to map them and bring them all together and solve that problem of what's your multiplier when two Pokemon are, are fighting for some reason. Uh, so that's the, uh, the final from last year. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that as review on the Wednesday of Dead Week. Also during Dead Week, uh, I think I, I, I don't remember if I've shown this to you or not, but, and I don't know if it's open yet or not. Uh, let's see if they've, he's posted Advent, Advent of Code is an Advent calendar. I think I've maybe have talked about it before. It's still not posted yet. Uh, but throughout Dead Week, I will be doing live coding exercises, uh, stream to YouTube. Uh, just by doing Advent of Code. I'll do the first four days of Advent of Code. Uh, and uh, you, you, you'll be able to watch those. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and announce when it's gonna happen. Uh, but then also I'm going to, uh, they'll, be, they'll be recorded as well and available on YouTube after the fact if you wanna follow along. I am not doing them at midnight. Uh, they release at midnight and if you really want the bragging rights, where's the leaderboards here? If you really want the, uh, the bragging rights, then uh, I'm logged in. Oh, we probably have to go to another year. Like, who is the who, who is the le uh, who who won Advent of Code in 2008? Anonymous user 193354. Good for you. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you only get points be by being the first one, uh, first 100 people to in the world to uh, to solve the problem. Uh, and then you get double points if you uh, solve the second problem of the day soon after. It releases at midnight Eastern time, I believe. 
I am not staying up that late to do it to try to make the leaderboard. So, uh, but I will be doing them in C as a review uh, throughout the week. Right? Uh, I can tell you right now that I've already made the final, so I will not be pulling any of those off. Uh, the final is already finalized, uh, and it has uh, so it has nothing. Uh, none of these exercises will be appear in the final. Uh, the exercises that will be appear in the final are going to be very closely matching what you've done before in your homeworks and your hacks and stuff like that. All right. Uh, any questions? Keep in mind that the final is on Tuesday, so we will. Not, there's no guarantee that we'll have the fifth homework uh, graded and out to everybody by that Tuesday. Uh, but at least you don't have to wait all time. <laughs> Somebody, uh, my TA told me she has a, uh, a, a final on Friday afternoon of, of finals week, and that's the worst, right? All right so uh, go ahead and have a great break. Uh, eat lots of turkey. And remember, if you are interested, go over to the Shore Center. Initialize is holding a, uh, a, a, a showcase of what they've done this semester.